In this web lab, we are going to explore responsive navigation for a website. There are many, many ways to handle navigation for small and large screens. Let's look at some examples. In this basic example, we use the trigram from Heaven Entity, and when clicked, it shows a list of menu items. Notice that in this example, the hamburger icon did not change. In this slightly more advanced option, we changed out the icon when the menu was opened. In this example, we move the hamburger button up into the header of the website. This change only requires a few additional CSS statements. You may have seen this off-screen navigation option. It's cool, but a bit beyond what we will cover. The navigation structure I will demonstrate is the one used by WordPress. You may have heard of it. WordPress is used to build nearly half of the websites on planet Earth. In the first video, we will build this small screen version of the navigation using a hamburger entity. In part two, we will build the widescreen horizontal navigation. In part three, we will enhance the small screen version using different icons for open and close. In part four, we will move the hamburger button elsewhere on the page using CSS. Here is the structure of our web lab folder. We have an index file, two linked style sheets, and a JavaScript file. I will close the file explorer for now to make more space. Let's start with the HTML. Here I have a basic HTML5 navigation tag. The first child of the nav tag is a button with an entity for the trigram for heaven. It looks like a hamburger. The second child of the nav tag is an unordered list. Each of the four list items has an anchor tag. This HTML tag structure is standard for WordPress and other content management systems. Notice that the second item has a class of current-menu-item. This is the standard WordPress class for the active menu item. Sometimes developers use the class of active, which also works. This class is important because it allows us to implement wayfinding, which is an important design principle. Now let's talk about how this menu works. Notice that I have added an ID of my button to the button. You can use any word here, and it will work as long as the JavaScript matches. Now let's look at the JavaScript. Notice on line one, I am using query selector to grab a reference to the ID of my button which we see here in the HTML. And we're putting it into a constant, which I decided to call hamburger element. Line two uses query selector as well to grab a reference to the class of menu links, which we see here in the HTML assigned to the unordered list. And we are putting it into a constant, which I decided to call nav element. Next, we have an event listener, listening for a click action. And when the user clicks on the button, which we have referenced as hamburger element, our script either adds or removes a class of open to the navigation element. Adding or removing is called a toggle. It's like a light switch. We will come back to this line in a later video. Let's return to our browser and inspect the button. When I click the button, you should see a class of open being added or removed from the unordered list. Make sure this is working before moving on. With that in place, we are now ready to use CSS to make our menu items look nice. Let's look at the CSS and see how each statement affects the final output. First, I will assign a background color to the nav so we can see it. It's perfectly okay to have white navigation, but that's a design choice you get to make. Now let's skip down and style the button. Remember that a touch item should be at least 44 pixels. Our current button is much too small. Let's increase the font size to 2 REM. Now we can clearly see the default gray background, which I will remove with background none. Now you can see an embossed border effect around the hamburger. We will remove this using border none. Now we run into a design problem because the black hamburger is hard to see on the green background. So I will change the color to white. If I turn off emulation and mouse over the button, you can see that the cursor does not change to a hand. 
So we will use CSS to change it to the pointer cursor. Now you can see the mouse icon changing. Let's turn the emulation back on. Let's set the width to 100%. I could align the icon to the left, like this. Or I could align it to the right. You get to decide. When we inspect the button, we can see that it is still too small for touch-enabled devices like a phone. Let's add some padding to make it taller and move it away from the screen edge. Remember that touching the screen edge is a visual tangent error. Now the button looks great, and when we inspect, it meets the minimum size requirements. Next, let's turn our attention to these ugly blue anchors, which are children of list items, which are children of an unordered list that has a class of menu links assigned. I'm going to add an ugly border so that you can see the results of my CSS changes. Let's make the anchors full width by displaying them as blocks. Now they are too short for touch screens, so let's add padding to make the links taller. In my case, 0.75 REM padding top and bottom made them 44 pixels tall, which is perfect. I also moved them away from the screen edge using two view widths, which looks great. Since blue is hard to see on green, I will change the color to white and then remove the default underline. Hopefully, you are using a Google font, and you can assign that font family so your links look better than mine do. Now let's remove that ugly border we added earlier. Remember in our HTML, we use the WordPress class of current-menu-item for the active menu item. Down here, I am using that class and adding a background color. In this case, I am using RGB alpha with a color of black at 20%. This will darken the nav background color for the current menu item. We will see how this is important a bit later. The point is that we now have implemented wayfinding because the menu item matches the page title. When a user opens your web page, the menu should be closed, but ours is open. So let's change the default view to not showing by displaying the unordered list as none. Now the menu items are hidden. When we click the hamburger, nothing happens, even though I can see a class of open being added and removed. We need to add a CSS statement that applies when the class of open is added. Down here we have a reference to the unordered list with a class of menu links and a second class of open. Two classes are being assigned to one element. Let's display the unordered list as a block. Now when we click, the menu opens. It would also work if we just had ul.open. And it would work if we had open and then menu links. So don't be surprised if you see it other ways on other sites. That's the conclusion of the small screen navigation.